When I first saw the specimen, I was completely blown away. You can see this beautiful little tiny bird skull preserved within this piece of amber. So I was going around showing it to everyone, like, look at this. It's so cool. To a paleontologist, it's weird. We've never seen anything like it. I definitely like couldn't keep the lid on this one. <laughs> When we think of dinosaurs, we think of these, you know, huge skeletons. But paleontology right now is being completely transformed by the discovery of skeletal fossils, fossil vertebrates preserved in amber. When you have an animal preserved in amber, it looks like it just died yesterday. All the soft tissue in place, trapped in this little, you know, window into an ancient time. So the specimen that we're talking about today is a teeny tiny little bird skull preserved in amber. And when I first saw this specimen, it just blew my mind. I have literally never seen anything like this. It's even smaller than a bee hummingbird, which is the smallest bird alive today. The jaws are filled with teeth. There's over 100 teeth present in the jaws. I had these weird eyes sticking out, looking to the side. And there's nothing like this alive today. So when we try to figure out what these morphologies mean, we really have to use a little bit of our imagination. But to us, the fact the skull is very fused, the fact it has lots of teeth, the fact it has these really big eyes, all suggests that despite its teeny tiny size, it was a predator. And it was probably feeding on small insects. But because the eyes are facing to the side, it would have lacked binocular vision, which is something we usually associate with predatorial birds. So oculodentavis was just weird. So this lump of amber is 100 million years old, which is smack dab in the middle of the Mesozoic era, you know, the age of dinosaurs. So this early bird coexisted with the long-necked sauropod dinosaurs. It coexisted with flying reptiles like pterosaurs. It was part of this really diverse Cretaceous fauna. And, you know, these tiny organisms can only be preserved in amber. You know, even in other places where you have exceptional preservation, you know, small things might have existed, but we don't have any evidence of it. So if it wasn't for amber, we wouldn't know about this minute fauna at all. And it's just incredible to uncover this, this new ecological niche that we never even knew existed. Right now, we're only in the very beginning of the study of these specimens, of what information we can glean from this material. Like right now, we are only describing what you can see through the amber and then the CT images of, you know, so we scan the specimen and then you can see the bones inside. But I'm hoping in the next 10 years that we're going to develop techniques that are going to allow us to access the biochemistry of the soft tissues that are preserved in there to be able to look for melanosomes in the feathers in order to determine color. But also, I actually am sitting on quite a few amazing specimens that I haven't had time to study yet, but there's a lot of very cool things that we still have like on the back burner that we'll be studying very soon. So stay tuned, there's a lot more cool stuff out there.